Good afternoon and welcome to the Virtual Pettis Art Museum Miami. My name is Marie Vickles and I'm the Director of Education. I hope that all of you joining us in this digital space are doing well, taking care of yourselves and your loved ones, and that today's program brings some joy and inspiration into your life. Our mission at PAM is to encourage everyone to see art as an incentive for genuine human interaction, communication, and exchange. And we think that this afternoon's program will do just that. Today, we present a special look into the recently opened group exhibition, My Body, My Rules, organized by PAM Associate Curator, Jennifer Ignacio. She will highlight selected exhibition works that focus on performance as she discusses exhibition themes such as women's authority and the power over their own experiences and mainstream ideals imposed on the images of the female body. A few acknowledgements before we get started. My Body, My Rules is presented with support from Karen H. Bechtel and William M. Osborne and Patricia N. William Clay. Additional support from PAM's International Women's Committee is also gratefully acknowledged. I would also like to thank the incredible team of people that have worked so very hard to bring together today's program. Big thanks to Anita Bram, Associate Director of Adult Programs and Audience Engagement, and our world-class AV team, Denise Baxis and Andrew Bird. We could not do this without you, thank you. Now let's get started with an introduction of Associate Curator Jennifer Inacio. Jennifer Inacio is an Associate Curator at the Perez Art Museum Miami, PAM, where her curated exhibitions include Pedro Neves Marquez, A Morida, The Bite, Feliz Grodin, Invasive Species, and the World's Game, Football and Contemporary Art 2018 with Franklin Sermons. She has also coordinated PAM exhibitions, including The Words of Others, Leon Ferrari and Rhetoric in Times of War, uh, 20, and Julio Laparc, Form into Action. And in 2017, Jennifer presented the film series Black Audio Film Collective at PAM, and recently helped coordinate an acquisition of works from the Sackner Archive of Concrete and Visual Poetry. Jennifer holds a BA in Art History from Florida Atlantic University and an MA in Contemporary Art from Goldsmiths College, University of London. During the course of this afternoon's conversation, please post your questions in the chat on our Facebook and YouTube live channels. We will try to answer as many as possible. And remember, if you value this and other programs presented by the museum, please consider supporting us by going to pam.org backslash donate. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Pam Associate Curator, Jennifer Inacio. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us um, here virtually. Um, so I'll give a quick intro about the exhibition, as Marie said, because the idea is to do focus, um, it's for me to focus on performance art within, um, or artists that are in the show and are, are talking about that, or are performance artists. So um, the, the whole idea of the show, a general idea is, you know, of course, my body, my rules is the body, is this female body. Um, a lot of the works in this exhibition are drawn from Pam's collection, uh, and they are works by women artists. Um, so we have about we have twenty three artists in in this exhibition, all women artists. Um, and just to start, and you know, I always like to to start right here at the end, just because the sign behind me is the title wall. It has this presence of you know, empowerment. I, I like to describe the title and this entry here as this chant of empowerment, um, really to set the tone of the exhibition as the viewer enters the space. Um, also behind me, we have a neon by Francis Goodman, um, who talks about, you know, this uh, relationship between submission and rebellion, and either keeping your words inside or, or speaking out as a woman. Uh, to take charge of that. So um, this entrance here really sets the tone for the exhibition of, of, of these artists that are using the body um, to talk about ideals and stereotypes and issues imposed on the female um, 
body uh, because of you know society roles and um, and stereotypes. Uh, I do want to start with um, Annabella Geige, which is this video room here that we have at the entrance of the exhibition. Annabella Geige is a Brazilian artist, a pioneer of a video art in Brazil, and. You know, when you think about performance artists, you, you think about the, you know, the actual event of performance, but we have a lot of works here in the exhibition that uh, use the body in this performatic way, such as Annabella Geiger here. You see her, the artist, using her own body as a medium. Um, and the video, we're actually towards the end now, but... Um, it's a 10 minute video, uh, actually 12 minute video where the artist is depicted um, starting in the, this really small interior um, staircase, uh, uh, possibly from a domestic space, but then in this repetitive motion, this per, uh, repetitive performance, she goes up and up in many steps until she is found in this larger public space. Um, this could be a staircase of this, you, you know, a, a, a city hall or a governmental building or that holds this importance and, and, and also, you know, uh, empowering role. And here she is reaching that, although it is uh, this repetitive and, and um, difficult, right, this long journey that she does, uh, she she moves, she's able to move from this domestic interior space into this outdoor powerful space. Um, then uh, we also have some other works that we'll see here. Um, another pioneering feminist artist uh, that we have in the collection, Ana Mendieta, who created these photographs um, in a journey she did in Mexico. And this is a really interesting piece because um, Ana Mendieta is often using the body. She sees the female body as this powerful symbol, as this goddess-like uh, symbol, fully charged, you know, with so much, um, so much uh, history. And um, here, you might have captured the first image that. Uh, she had her body with flowers emerging out of it, but throughout these other photographs, there's this absence, um, you know, so she talks a lot about the presence and the absence of the body within the landscape. Um, and it has this ritualistic tone to it. You know, this is not a performance that she did as we know, uh, you know, what performance art is, but this is body art, which is a movement that, that, that grew out of the performance art movement of the 60s and 70s, um, where, like I said earlier, artists are using the body as a, as a medium. Um, and within feminist art history, this is such an important medium because the artists, women, these women artists are using their own body um, uh, and, and they're dictating, right? They're dictating where they want their bodies to be, how they want their bodies to be perceived. And by using that, uh, the body as a medium, uh, in a way, they're like claiming that power, right? Like claiming the body and, and dictating, as I said, how they want this body to, to live within, you know, various landscapes or, or ideas, discussions, and how they want. Um, pretty much taking authority over that. Right behind me here, I'll just briefly mention you have this beautiful Wangechi Motu, also another artist where she's not, you know, as we're seeing, um, as we have seen in the Ana Mendieta and the Annabella Gaga, she's not using her body, but she is constructing this body out of images that she finds from magazines. Um, so it's just a, a you know, does it um, really pertain to this body movement uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here with performance art, but it's also another beautiful work that we have in the exhibition. Um, and while we're here, let me just briefly talk about the uh, Maria Nepomuceno beautiful sculpture by a Brazil, another Brazilian artist who um, is approaching this abstract representation of the female body, right? This is called Tres Mulheres, Three Women. And um, she's depicting 
these forms that are reminiscent of, of female organs, you know, female, uh, maybe uterus, ovaries, and also the, the materiality of it too is, um, you know, she's using ropes, which are often seen as this hard, you know, tough material. Um, and, and then these delicate uh, beads that overlap or are immersed and, and constructed with, with the ropes and together they're constructing these beautiful organic forms. Um, Zilia Sanchez is also another artist who is also uh, approaching the body in an abstracted way. Um, Christina Quarles, who we see, you know, so um, creating this large interior space, almost like, you know, reminiscent of an interior space where uh, one could say these are wallpapers and paintings on the wallpaper, but Christina Quarles um, does a lot, it is often talking about gender binaries and race and identity within her work. And by using the technique of chalkboard or fooling the eye, um, you know, one could think that there are paintings or a window at the top of this installation. Yet when you approach it, you see it's all one plane and it's all in one plane equal surface. Um, so this is a, you know, a, a method that she does in order to, to talk about you know, gender binaries and, and how we view and perceive gender binaries within society. And then going back to performance art and you know, body art movement, we have um, Patty Chang, who is an American performance artist uh, this is a uh, well-known videos of her from 2001. Um, it's 16 minute long video that she is being captured, sitting down. Um, the video starts with her touching her body. Um, you really can't tell if it's a sense of uh, pleasure, you know, or uh, as she's body and discovering her body. And then all of a sudden it starts um, giving this sense of eeriness or, um, you know, discomfort and um, her wanting to either contain this unknown, uh, uh, unknown object that is moving inside her blouse or, you know, wanting to get rid of it. So um, these are actually eels that are trapped inside her, her, um, we can start seeing it now, like uh, at moments you don't see it move, but right now you, you see this foreign uh, thing <laughs> moving inside of her and her face of discomfort and, um, and terror also. So she uses a lot, you know, her body in a lot of these performatic uh, videos uh, and other performances that she creates. Um, again, you know, to either represent this discomfort or also take authority over, over the own body, the, her own female body. Um, then as we move towards the, the back wall where I want to end the presentation talk more, we have this just very quickly, the Hafe Karham, again, the body as a medium, although she is, you know, using painting as a medium here, she is representing these bodies, uh, the contortions of it. So uh, it's not necessarily body art movement or performance art, but the fact that she is using the contortionist, um, yeah, she created a, a whole series of paintings focusing on contortionists and the movement of the body and how discomfort we perceive um, um, those flexible movements as. Uh, yet she represents these uh, six figures here bending, contorting their bodies in a way, but also with this very powerful gaze towards the viewer. And that's where I wanted to use it as a transition, you know, the female gaze that uh, is used a lot by feminist artists to challenge, challenge the male gaze. Um, um, women have been perceived in art history by uh, often by the male gaze, right? We see older paintings that women are captured uh, in seduct uh, seductive poses. Um, yet what, what women are doing now uh, through the female gaze is to challenge that and not 
objectify, not to do um, sexualize and fetishize the, the female body. Um, and, and, and look at it with an empathetic, you know, empathetic lens within, um, uh, through a female perspective to tell the own story uh, of, of, of women artists or of women in general. And the female gaze, um, you know, it, it's seen a lot in these photographs here. Um, that's uh, the idea of putting all of these photographs together Although you see the nude bodies, some nude bodies or some bodies um, placed in seduct seductive poses, um, you, you see empathy around it, right? You see these stories and narratives being built by women. Um, I love to start talking about this wall with Michaeline Thomas that we see here. Um, it's this photograph that she created by... Um, she created by photographing her female, uh, her, her lover at the time. And, um, you know, like I said, one might often see these as, yeah, these bodies being objectified or, or, or um, sexualized and fetishized. But um, once you start seeing these um, key points within the photograph, uh, you're able to analyze this as a female when Michaeline Thomas, uh, I, I always love to point to this area here where she, um, the subject being photographed, has the markings of the socks on her left leg. And um, her printer specialist wanted to remove that, right? Make this smooth, nice, pristine um, skin surface. And she, she objected to that. She wanted to keep that reference there to humanize her, right? Uh, humanize this um, person that was being photographed and, and say that, you know, she had a moment before this, this moment where she's being captured uh, uh, lounging in her personal space. You also see these personal objects, um, the style of music that she's interested in, um, even, even the color of the wall too, which we see throughout the exhibition, this dark, you know, burgundy purple. Um, uh, plants. So this this portrait, although she might be first seen as um, being, you know, uh, sitting in this seductive pose, you start seeing these elements that are are person uh, humanizing humanizing the subject. We also have Andrea Geyer here, uh, real quick, who did a series of these constellation photographs that that uh, capture women that held important and major roles within the cultural sector. Here we have Lydia Cabrera and Titina, her partner. Um, and she created photographs, you know, so put them in a, in a higher platform and, and highlight the importance that they've had in um, their, um, in, I'm sorry, I keep hearing some noises here. Uh, in their uh, role, you know, within the cultural sector. Then, um, again, going to uh, the body movement, right? Using the body, uh, artists using their own bodies within the work to produce these works, almost in a performatic way as well. We have Naomi Fisher right here at the top. She is a local Miami artist, and she created and, and, and beautiful photographs um, immersing herself in this tropical landscape of Miami, right? Um, also, her father was a botanist, so there's a, a strong tie there to looking at the landscape, um, strong references there to looking at how the body uh, is you know, in conversation or in dialogue with the landscape. And what she did in this series of photographs where she immerses herself with some erotic, this one is not so much erotic as other ones that we, that she has done um, with, you know, uh, um, uh, tree trunks or, or flowers coming out of her body um, has this very erotic um, essence and you know again going back into this idea of the body being used as a medium here she is taking control of that 
of this uh, uncontrollable landscape that is taking over and has so much life and energy moving around it. And when um, women artists were engaging with performance art, uh, we see a lot of of this aggressive and you know naked bodies and very sexual um, images being put out there, and which is very interesting because uh, that is challenging, right? How women are perceived in society as you know uh, pristine and 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 um, you know uh, reserved, and by doing that, how when women were approaching this this angle within performance art or within art, uh, it's, it can be considered as challenging, uh, challenging how, um, you know, the idea of women that's submissive and controlled and very, you know, reserved um, uh, attitude um, should be, right? How, how women should be boxed in into this attitude. And then as a transition to that, what I just mentioned, you know, Carolee Schneeman created about 36 of these photographs from this iBody series in 1963, where she um, took a series of photographs in her studio with various objects, with broken glass, broken mirrors, with paint, um, again, going using the body as a medium with these other objects that were surrounding her. We, have, we see a snake here as well. And Carolyn Schneeman is this iconic figure in feminist uh, performance art uh, from the 60s. And that's another key point I wanted to make here that in this wall and or in this exhibition, we have, you know, a diversity in artists from all over the the world we have Latin American Middle Eastern artists and we have this diversity within the show but we also have this diversity in age gaps too we started looking at Annabella Geige that was producing works in the 70s during a military dictatorship in Brazil so very oppressed you know years um, she's creating this um, political work about looking at the female role within society we have Carolee Schneeman from the second wave uh, feminist movement um, where, you know, this performance art movement really started in the 60s and 70s. And we have, you know, other artists that are working in 2020, such as Hedkar, um, the, the painting that I showed before moving into this wall. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see um, how the body has been used, you know, throughout the years and through a diverse group of artists. And then I just want to end um, with Cindy Sherman here, which is also on this photographic wall. You know, she is an iconic um, photographer. Uh, if you know if she's not um referenced in art history classes uh, that is a questionable class but she is often um referenced as this great example of how um a, a woman female photographer is using this medium to uh, deconstruct the the female identity that is often you know um perceived by society. She is known for creating these series of photographs where she uses props, you know, makeup, different outfits to um, uh, personify this, this, this female role. Here she's uh, being depicted or depicting herself as a secretary um, at one of her first job sites in in New York. Um, and she's also known for these series of black and white photographs that she did, um, recreating these uh, female personas from film, from, from media culture, uh, you know, not as um, a way to, I mean, in, in a way to not criticize, but to show us, right? To show us what um, what the female role is perceived um, in society, or or really to highlight how how women are captured and portrayed. So by doing this, recreating this, it's almost you know um, highlighting, really uh, presenting it to us.
um, and uh, as a as a moment or as a platform to to consider and rethink that. And then while we're here too, let's just uh, wrap it up with Francesca Wood, um, uh, Woodman, who is uh, was a photographer that died so young, um, but left so many photographs um, uh, of self and uh, of other women um, subjects that she would depict, and often, you know. Uh, the body was very present, and, and if not most times, uh, if not all, it was definitely most of her photographs had the female body. Um, and what she would often do is is either, you know, not show the face, not show her face or the other female subjects that she was depicting, um, or either blur it. And, and even though this is a static image, you know, this action that she's doing on her tummy or on her belly is something that is often, you know, done, done by women and questioning, like, should this be here? You know, should this extra, um, uh, you know, skin or fat be in the, in the belly, these worries and concerns that are put on, on the, on the female, uh, um, on women, right. And these, these ideals of beauty. So, um, again, not all of these works are, you know, exact performances, like, uh, Carly Schneeman and some of the other videos I did, but by using the body as a medium, it becomes this performatic, um, you know, per performatic quality. And um, I think I'll wrap it up right here and we can open up for questions. Thank you so much, Jen, for that fantastic tour. Um, and for any of us who haven't seen it in person, I'm really excited and can't wait to see it myself. Um, so a few questions to kick it off while the audience is getting warmed up and submitting their questions. Um, I just wanted to know if you could tell us a bit more about um, your process for selecting works from the PAM collection and what that's like. Yeah, no, it, it was great. You know, this whole idea really started looking at works that we already had in the, in the collection. Um, we had acquired these really large installations like the Christina Corals, uh, Marina Pomoceno, other works that I was not able to include here for logistical reasons, but that's what really started the process and seeing how we had been collecting um, these really strong and powerful works by women artists. That's how the idea started. And then after digging through the collection and starting starting to see these photographic uh, works, um, you know, the, the idea started shaping up, the, the idea of the female gaze and, and and looking at the body as a medium and how many of these artists, not just in the photographs are using the actual body, but are looking at the image of the body, right? So um, it's been an incredible process. Also very, um, uh, uh, you know, a good experience to, to think that, you know, we are building this collection. We had works that were already here, but we have works that are very recent coming in because we are purchasing, we're making this action of going out there and purchasing these strong works by female artists. So it's fulfilling, you know, to know that we're working at this museum and, and building a really strong collection of, of these amazing artworks. Thank you. And um, also, I guess it's very pointed and perhaps maybe obvious, but not that you, um, are obviously curated a show that is entirely of uh, artists who identify as women. Um, could you, perhaps this is personal, but could you tell us a bit about how, like what you do in your daily curating practice um, and artist research to like really continue to close that gap between a women artist or artists who identify as women and uh, people who identify mm -hmm. as men artists, like what you're doing to continue to close that in museums and yeah. exhibitions. No, exactly. I think in my personal view, you know, it's it's definitely something that is in my mind uh, when we're looking at things or when, you know, I go to an exhibition, a group show, it's something that pops in. And then at a more professional level too, working here at the museum, this is, it's not just me. I, I think I can speak for everyone, the curatorial staff. It's always a question that, that comes up, you know, when we're building lists for um, artists that we might want to purchase. Um, and uh, when we're also looking at the exhibition program, it's something that's always in the back of our minds and, and, 
and diversifying the, these lists that we come up with. Is it balanced enough? Is it uh, including, you know, not just women, you know, uh, women and men, uh, also diversity in cultures and backgrounds and races. So um, it's definitely something that is in everyone's mind and obviously mine. Um, so it's, yeah, so that's definitely a part of, of and that's, I think, you know, to answer the question, um, to be constantly thinking about that is essential to start, right? You need to have these questions in your mind to before you, you do anything, um, because that will trigger, right? If you're hiring someone or if you're purchasing a work into the collection or if you're planning an exhibition, if you have these questions and these concerns in your mind, that will always be present there. So I think that's always the, the, the starting point. Um, and as you're, and as I am, am creating these lists or, or ideas for exhibitions, having that in the back of the mind is, is essential to, to make things happen, right? Um, transform it into a thought, into an action. Right. Keeping it top of mind is like the first mm -hmm. step. We certainly all appreciate that. Um, are there any like special connections or between artists or mentorships that you've learned of um, by putting this exhibition together between the artists or you and the artists? I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? Yeah, um, are there any special connections between or between the artists and the show or mentorships between any of the artists and the show? Um, like like the artists here within the show, I think. Yeah, like influenced by each other or. Exactly, I think um, that I that I know of exactly no, but I you know the 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 this photograph wall to me like really show like it's almost like a, a timeline right of 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 this idea of the body starting in performance art and then um uh, going into body art movement which we see in Anna Medieta and Annabella Geiger so if they were directly in influenced by other artists here in the show, I'm not aware of, but I do see this thread, this connecting thread between the works. Right. Um, starting from fem uh, performance art to body art movement. And then, you know, the female gaze is, I could say it's almost in all of these, right? These women uh, are challenging um, how the, body, the female body is perceived. So that I think the female gaze is really presence in every work, the, regard, regardless of the medium that they're using. Right. Um, thank you. And of course, you have the, the video work behind you, but um, obviously during these different times, it's hard to incorporate performance, and it's definitely something we're going to look to do at the museum um, in March. But is there, are there any, you know, performance works that if you think speak to this exhibition that you couldn't include it for obvious reasons that like performances aren't happening right now. Is there anything that you look to or reference? Yeah, no, there's definitely, you know, I think um, when you think about performance artists and feminists are the, the one thing to, to, that comes to mind is the Guerrilla Girls, right? That's, I think, um, was one of the first uh, um like feminist art that 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 I was introduced to and that really opened my mind to like questioning right oh you're it's right you know museums don't have uh collect don't have amazing collections that that are balanced enough that that include women artists um so that I think the the gorilla girls really opened my mind to to thinking about um about artists uh, and 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 you know uh, we don't have here in the show but it's always something that is very present in my mind um and then yeah there were with performance art you know uh, we are actually working together with education um as a way to include that because performance art has such a major role in feminist art history and um Although we have some references here, I think having an actual performance um, is essential. So we are um, considering uh, creating a, a program in, in March and don't have a lot of details yet now, but that's something that it's definitely a moment that I'll take advantage to include, you know, artists that, um, or performances or, or other 
topics and subjects that were not included in the show. So we're using that as, as a moment to, to really include that and ex expand, right? Move the gallery from the space into more performatic. And now if it's going to be in person or virtual, we don't, we uh, only time will tell, but that'll definitely be a moment to, to add and build more layers into the show. Exactly. I think that's the, the perfect place to end. Thank you so much for this really special tour and look into the exhibition. Um, if you haven't gone to see it yet, we encourage you to do so with time ticketing. Um, but thank you so much, Jen. It was great. And also, we hope you all will join us, as Jen mentioned briefly, um, in spring of 2021 for a special performance in relation to My Body, My Rules, whether it be in person, virtual, or a hybrid combo. So we hope to see you all soon. And thanks so much again, Jen. Virtual applause. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.